My name is Caitlin Rhodes. Even though I live in Beijing, I haven't really experienced it. I used to work for Sports Illustrated China, interviewing jet-setting athletes about their lives. But meeting my deadlines left me no time to have a life of my own. So I've decided to do something about it. Forget the tourist sites. I've set out to learn about China hands-on. <laughs> Not from a book, but on my own, to get below the surface and discover the real China. You know, sometimes I forget where I am. I forget that I'm living in China, but you come here, you come to the Great Wall, you see, basically, we pledge allegiance to Chairman Mao, and then I remember. Spanning more than 5,000 miles and 2,000 years of history, there is no symbol of China more iconic than the Great Wall. I'm guessing I've climbed it about 20 times now. The trip started blending together a little bit after the 15th time or so. All right. Time to go up to the top. But no matter how many times I climb the wall, I always find myself thinking about its history. It was originally built in 7th century BC by different leaders during China's Warring States period. Kind of like when two kids share a bedroom. The only way to keep the peace is to divide the room down the middle with a line. This is my half, you can't come over here. Yeah, kind of like that, except, you know, with more feudalism and a sort of civil war kind of a feel to it. Anyway, the Great Wall only became the Great Wall as we think of it today in 220 BC, when the emperor of the Qin Dynasty, you might know him as the guy who built that army of terracotta soldiers, began to link it together to block out Mongol invaders from the north. Each section was built a little differently, I do, I love China, but one of the things that drives me crazy are the tiny little steps. Look, they're like an inch big, and you're like, why bother? Why make me pick up my foot to do <laughs> But my favorite Great Wall construction story is about the Simitai section, just 75 miles outside of Beijing. Simitai is one of the most popular sections of the wall. It's super steep, which makes for great pictures. 229, 230. <sighs> Simitai is also a fan favorite because it incorporates architectural features from all the other sections of the Great Wall. Scoring mountain ridges, cresting over peaks, and plunging into valleys. It's literally a hike to get to the top. Great idea, make the girl with a sprained ankle climb the Great Wall. Whose idea was this anyway? Oh, mine. So how did they get all those stones up here anyway? Apparently, the architectural marvel that is the Great Wall of China was built by goats. Well, they didn't actually build it, but they did truck the bricks up the mountain ridges. Allegedly, the goats carried one stone per trip, but can't you just see some goat like absolutely flattened, legs splaying out to the sides, scabbering up the mountainside like a crab? Power through the little stairs. Hey, is that why they made such irritatingly tiny steps? so the goats could climb them? The only way to deal with them is to take them like three at a time. And what reward did the goats get for all their hard work? Censure, excommunication, exile. After centuries of hauling all that dead weight up to the top, you'd think the goats would be given some simple reparations. They weren't asking for much really, just some snacks, just a few nibbles of the plants that grow at the base of the wall. But those plants happen to prevent the soil erosion that could actually take down the whole wall. So instead of getting snacks, the goats got banned. <sighs> the scapegoats of Simitai. 
But now, Simitai, which is normally swarming with huge tourist groups, is basically deserted. Why? Well, you'd think they try to blame this one on the goats too, but actually, they say it's because of the financial crisis. Please, the financial crisis? It's totally because of the goats. You can get shots with just you on the wall. Like here, what, what a good picture. There's another section of the wall that might be even more popular than Simitai, Badaling. Just 50 miles northwest of Beijing, the public buses easily pipe in tourists. Maybe too many. The municipal government recently had to cap the number of tourists visiting that section to 16 million per year. I personally try to avoid 16 million tourists whenever possible, so I haven't been back to Badaling since I first went in 2005. But the new architectural wonder of China is in Badaling, the commune by the Great Wall, featuring villas designed by 12 of Asia's most heralded architects. Marketed for upscale clientele, the Kapinski Hotel Management is sure to point out that it's just a hop, skip, and a 20-minute helicopter ride from the Beijing Capital Airport. Ooh, I like the look of this one. I'm going to check it out. Celebs like Hollywood actress Renee Zellweger, pop sensation Jennifer Lopez, and tennis star Serena Williams aren't the only ones that have enjoyed staying in the Great Wall's lap of luxury. Just a 90-minute chauffeured ride from Beijing, it's emerged as the hot new destination for China's rich and famous. And when I say rich, I mean really rich. I'll take it. For 3,000 US dollars a night. I'll be back when I win the lottery. But no one has to worry about slumming it though. All the villas, regardless of price, come fully staffed. Yeah, that's right, butler included. In 2004, Condé Nast Traveler selected the commune as one of the 100 hottest hotels in the world. The only mainland China hotel to make the list. I wouldn't mind just living there, let alone in the house, just right there in that lounge chair. In 2005, the commune made it into the Tatler Travel Guide as one of the top 10 boutique hotels in the world. I can definitely feel the Japanese influence. This is very, very tranquil. I love the sound of running water, and unfortunately, the only way I get that in my apartment is from the sink. Kengo Kuma, the Japanese architect who designed this villa, wanted to, quote, apply the nature of the Great Wall to the act of dwelling, end quote. Inspired by how the uninterrupted undulation of the Great Wall along the mountain ridgeline incorporates rather than dominates the landscape, Kuma was not about to buy into the modern theory of architecture. The more eye-catching, the more attention-grabbing, the better preferring instead to use as much light and natural materials as possible to achieve transparency. Oh wow, I think the bedrooms have numbers. I wonder how many there are. I wouldn't mind staying here. Pretty much the same, but why mess with a good thing? It's really nice. What is that? A giant sombrero? Ah, the giant sombrero. A classic element of Japanese interior design. God, I love making TV. I'm gonna get to stay at the commune for free? What? I'm not staying overnight? so pretty that it's almost depressing because I don't actually live here. I'm just visiting. <laughs> but I get free reign to explore the estate. Nice. 
That saves me the $20 it would have cost me to take a day tour. Well, that's about $20 more than I have to my name right now. So, I'll take it. I think I need to see if they have financial aid to live here. but the paying customers are here. So now that I've seen where China's rich and famous live, the time has finally come to experience how they live. So I've gotten to look at the luxury here, but now I get to experience it for myself. I'm getting a massage! Hey, how many times have you heard me complain about hauling my gimpy ankle around? And have you seen me dragging my leg behind me a la Jack Nicholson in The Shining? No, you haven't, because I haven't even though I wanted to. So yeah, I deserve this massage. <laughs> it's hard to say that you like deserve a massage because who deserves a massage more than someone else, but I really feel like I earned this. I've already reached the halfway point of my massage, but I wish it could go on forever. This is why I shave my legs. It's not bad with a oil massage. Usually my legs are too sensitive to massage and I'm screaming and like flailing all over the table, but this, this is good. This is relaxing. I used to think of the Great Wall as a thing of the past, albeit a really cool, really long thing, a monument to and from Imperial China. Before I came to the commune, I never really thought about how, even though the Great Wall was built thousands of years ago, it could be the driving force for something so contemporary chic. Well, it's been a tiring couple of days, but not a bad way to end it. I've had a massage, and now I just get to sit here drink my wine, and enjoy the view. The commune by the wall reminded me that Beijing isn't just about the traditional, like the Hutong, Peking Duck, the opera, or even the Great Wall. Beijing is also avant-garde. It's wrong to describe Beijing's record growth as playing catch-up with other nations, because clearly, it's carving its own path. The commune won international awards by featuring all Asian architects. Contemporary doesn't need to equate with Western. There's a saying, what we pay attention to expands. Everyone tends to focus on China's traditional and so-called Eastern traits, but if we just pay attention to the contemporary, we'd allow that to expand. It's not so much that China needs to change, but that we need to change how we think of China. How funny would that be? This is the part where I start getting a little bit nervous about finding anything. <laughs>